You focus on investing in early stage companies in the data tooling space, everything from databases to analytics engines and ML ops tools. So our listeners can probably get a great sense now of why you specifically were an amazing guest to have on the show on a data science program to talk about venture capital, because that really is your area of expertise. Um, so um, there's, to give a sense of the scale of how this space is changing, um, there is a pretty popular um, diagram, a chart out of First Mark Capital that shows a landscape of companies in the data tooling space. And we'll include in the show notes from 2012, there's 150 vendors on it. And last year's chart has over 2,000 companies. So you can barely see the names and logos on the infographic. So in a space like that, that has exploded, it's about 10 times larger in terms of the number of companies over a 10-year span, how do you pick winners in an increasingly crowded space like that, Sarah? Yeah, it's a great question. So, so I think about this through kind of like two lenses. One is how do we pick winners? The other is how do we pick winners in a space like that? Uh, so, so I'll start with how do we pick winners? You know, the thing that I often tell people who are going into early stage VC or who are asking about how we make decisions is that it's people, 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 product, market. As I had mentioned before, when we were talking about you know, Peter Abiel um, and Tim Kraska, uh, we are often investing in deeply technical founders who really understand the domain in which they are building solutions. But we're also looking at you know, people who can articulate kind of a crisp vision of the future, uh, who can do so in such a way that they will embolden and enamor potential customers, recruits, community in some senses. We also want to make sure that in addition to deeply understanding the technology, a potential founder deeply understands and empathizes with the user pain point. So you know, a gotcha in investing is often uh, that you find founders with like a technology that's kind of searching for a problem right. uh, rather than a technology that is either solving a problem or unlocking a clear opportunity. Right. Um, we do think a lot about like the the product strategy and you know how does that technology get encapsulated in a product um, that one can sell efficiently. Um, that one can sell repeatedly without incurring too much services, implementation, and other associated costs. And lastly, you know, we think a lot about the market and whether we expect the market that that company is selling into to expand, to contract, or to become crowded. So let's talk about that. Like, Clearly, you know, the data NML market has become increasingly crowded. Mm -hmm. I think in that vein, what we're typically focusing on is, you know, is this company solving an urgent problem? Is it a problem for which there is no adequate solution? But also, does the founder have a sense of what are the adjacent use cases or workflows that they can expand into? So you're not just solving, you know, that point problem, but you're also thinking about like the, the adjacencies. Mm -hmm. um, well, and I think, you know, that's really, that's really important, not just from an investing perspective, but you know, from the perspective of uh, data science practitioners, like, Nobody wants to use thousands of tools. Nobody wants to use like 10 tools to get their job done. Right. I'm not super bullish on like, you know, quote unquote, end to end platforms, like one tool to roll them all. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if your options are somewhere between one and 10, like three feels about right, four feels about right. So right. really identifying like those problems and the things that are orthogonal or, or adjacent that you can cover, uh, I think becomes more critical to like uh, delivering a great experience to, to users. Super cool. All right. So to summarize how you pick winners, it's people, 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 product market. And is that, is there a direction to that over time? 
or is it mostly just that you, your point is that you're emphasizing people the most? Yeah. So, so at the earliest stages, you don't have much to go off of when you're evaluating you know, products and, and markets. Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody can predict how the you know, markets will inflect over time. Uh, uh, the company is going to iterate on their product. They're going to gain information by interfacing with users in the market. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that hasn't always happened yet, particularly again at the early stages. So really like the thing that you can bet on is, is the people are these great leaders. Do they have kind of a clear sense of thinking about the alignment between technologies, products, and, and problems? Um, over time, you gain information about the product, you gain information about the market. And so, uh, the balance shifts away a little bit from people, 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 product market to maybe people, right. product market. Right. Um, but I think the thing that we see time and time again is that like, it really does take people to make you know, a great company mm-hmm. um, and companies with great leaders that are able to recruit and retain great talent. They're often able to survive you know, some of the hiccups in product or, or market that almost always arise. Right. Cool. That's great perspective. All right. So that gives us a sense of how to pick winners in general. And then do you have specific guidance for when it's a crowded, fast moving space like data tools? Yeah, I mean, that's where, again, like I get into the the focus on solving an urgent problem, right. but also an urgent problem with you know, these adjacent workflows right, 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 that, right. that gotcha. you can expand into. Nice, perfect. Um, the other thing actually that I would yeah. add there too, is that like, I believe pretty strongly in a reversion to simplicity. So, so I think like often when we have like a new market, uh, take, you know, data science and ML, the first set of tools that, you know, come to market, they're going to be like a little bit clunky. They're going to be a little bit more complex. I'm sure like many of your listeners have felt this when interfacing with, tools day to day. But over time, the developer ergonomics should improve. Over mm-hmm. time, the abstractions should become more manageable and, and uh, simple. And y- you see the Hadoops turn into snowflakes. You see Jupyter Notebooks turn into uh, products like Hex. So perhaps, you know, I, I'm just an optimist, but I think you know, over time, markets go up and tools get better. <laughs> 